Hey, I'm David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the behind the scenes and untold TV stories you probably wouldn't have known from the people who lived them. Today, part three of my conversation with Hal Linden. Today, we'll discuss how does reality intrude on a fictional world. Ava Goda spins off into fish. We talk about the actors finding their take on the characters, the transformation of Wojohowicz, and Hal tells us what he brought to Barney. Plus, how a fictional episode about race turned into a real-life lesson for the cast. Here's Hal Linden. A lot of shows find other ways to deal with the end of a, a, character. a character. Either the person leaves, goes on to do something else, or something, you know, the, 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 what happened with John Ritter yeah, on that right. show. Could you talk for a moment, because that's, that, to me, that's very interesting, is the creative process and how um, reality does have its imposition, you know, like art imitates life, but then art is, 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 is needs to be dealt, life has to be dealt with in art sometimes. I, I don't recall that, you know, life intruded too much on, uh, on, on, on Barney. It did with the character of uh, uh, Fish. The network was adamant about spinning Fish off onto his own show. Danny was not so adamant. Now, I mean, you go to a producer and say, hey, I'm going to give you another show. They would normally say, hey, great, you know. Danny said, this character fits where he is, and he wanted him to stay. The network, they had to do it, so they retired him. That's when Steve Landisberg came in. And, uh, and Fish went on to have his own show, which was not all that successful. It didn't run that long. So he made one or two appearances. It's amazing to me. I mean show something about Abe Bogota. Uh, he was only on the show, I think, three years. And if you ask anybody about Barney Miller, he's the most memorable character, easily. Um, probably more than Barney. Uh, so, you know, that was an element uh, of life intruding. I think more so was the input of the actors. After a while, we became experts in our own characters. Ron Glass knew Harris a lot better than Danny Arnold did. And Wojo, Max Gale, knew Wojo a lot better than any of the writers did. And Wojo, for instance, was a, a metamorphosis. The original character on their first uh, pilot was a character named Kaczynski, I think. It was played by uh, somebody else. And he was a kind of a gung-ho guy who was ready to to, to uh, bust in on, you know, ready to shoot the weapons and everything. And, and Wojo, being a different kind of person, Max Gale, changed that character, really, to a th kind of a naive, thoughtful guy who really wanted to learn about everything and in the process kept getting into trouble. Uh, but that was a bit of Max Gale that was finding its way. Um, What did you bring to Barney? What did I bring? What did I bring to Barney? What, how, how, how was Barney come part? How did Hal? <coughs> what did Hal put into Barney? I think I was cast to create Barney. Danny Arnold again saw me in the Rothschilds, and he, somebody uh, before we went into production, somebody asked him why he had cast me. I must tell you, I was not exactly the network choice. I didn't know who the hell I was, you know. Uh, some Broadway actor who's bringing out the play, you know, they have a nice list of all these people who had TV cues and things like that. And then he said, no, this is the guy I want. You could do it in those days. You can't do it today, but you could do it in those days. Uh, he was asked why he hired me, and I, I have divined since that what he saw in the Rothschilds uh, he wanted in that character. And when you think about it, it was very fundamental to the kind of show we did. He described it as a Talmudic sense of justice. That is the recognition that the distance from one side of the table to the other was not that far. And there, but for the grace of social 
conditions, heritage, God, go all of us. So we never really had any murderers in, uh, we only had people who kind of got in trouble. And that sense that Barney was not going to be the avenging angel, but was going to be the, the character who saw the humanity. I was, after all, the eye of the audience. I had to, I had to be the eye of the audience. I had to comment. My comments would be the audience's comments. Or what Danny wanted the audience comment to be. And, and uh, so I think that's why he put me in there. Because he, I guess he recognized that in the Rothschilds that I could do that. Voice of reason, common sense, a little, little of that. Reason. Right. Yeah. Uh, you say, how did life intrude? One great memory in my in my life was the um, an episode where Harris um, is is uh, undercover and is running down an alley, fought, chasing somebody undercover, and is shot at by an, a uniformed policeman because he thinks that Harris is the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. The episode uh, quickly devolves into why? Because it's after the fact that we have the episode. Why? Is a black man running down an alley, not in uniform, by definition a perp? That whole, and that the episode came to be about how we reacted to it. And Harris was kind of angry at the rest of us, particularly me, because I wasn't upset as upset about it as he was. I said, well, you know, you weren't carrying a, uh, a, a regulation weapon. Um, it's possible to make a mistake. You know, Barney can <laughs> paper over anything. And... Um, when we got to shooting the end of the show, the scene was Harris, he had walked out really angry at us. And the, the last scene, he came back and apologized for having kind of gone over the top, et cetera, and we all got, you know. And we were ready to shoot the last scene when Ron Glass said, what am I apologizing about? Why am I apologizing? Why aren't they apologizing to me? And at one o'clock in the morning or whatever it was we were shooting it, we had a history of late shoots. There was Danny and the writers and the cast standing around. This is golden time. You know, those camera people are getting triple scale by now, you know. Talking about how the characters felt and what. And you know, the interesting thing about it is this was maybe the third or fourth year or fifth year that the rest of us now turned to Danny and said, you know, he's right. Why, are, why is he apologizing to us? We're the ones who were insensitive to the situation. Shouldn't we be apologizing? And right then and there, he wrote a new scene for Ron Glass who, to be able to play it. That's fantastic. It was the, it was an incredible creative time in my life because all the creation was there and That's we were groundbreaking. Part. Yeah, it, it was sounded like groundbreaking television at the time. Oh, yeah, so much no, what you guys did. No question. Be with us next time when Hal Linden talks about the final episode of Barney Miller and the real reason why creator Danny Arnold decided to end the series. Hal tells us about watching a Barney Miller marathon years later and how it felt to see the show years after it went off the air. And he walks us through a work week of Barney Miller while they were in production. Till next time, who was your favorite Barney Miller guest star and why? Leave your answer in the comments. We'll see you then, and thanks for watching.